Hi, Coffee Beans. How's it brewing? I hope all of you and your loved ones are doing well and staying safe. Reusable and disposable masks have been an important staple for all of us when we go out to run our errands. I've been really wanting to make a set of washable cloth masks for my husband and I. Well, a few days ago, my good friend Masami posted some pictures of these beautiful masks she made for herself and her husband. She lives in Tokyo and made her mask using gorgeous cotton fabric. Plus, the pattern she used is a Japanese pattern and has this really unique shape that fits to your face really nicely. It actually kind of reminds me of Mortal Kombat. Sharing the Japanese culture with others and the culture of wearing masks during the flu and allergy seasons is really important to Masami. So, if you'd like to check her out and see all of her amazing photos and projects, you can find her on Instagram, at Mastarshine. Today, I'll show you step-by-step -step how to sew your own fabric masks using this pattern. I put the link to the website below. This is the perfect sewing project for beginners. It uses a lot of simple techniques that you would use on any garment, but it's not super important to get your seams straight or perfect. This is just a mask, not a form-fitting dress. The pattern she sent me is from the Japanese site SmileWorks25. I used Google Translate to see what the pattern labels were. We had men's, women's, top, chin, outer, lining, and the finished size. Then I pulled the website up on my phone in order to view the step-by-step -step instructions and to have them translated by Google into English. For this project, we'll be using Hufflepuff cotton fabric, some super cute bunny cotton fabric, to represent bunny DIY, of course, and some white tea towels for a breathable gauze fabric lining, and thin elastic. This is optional, but if your fabric is folded and wrinkly like mine, I suggest ironing it before you try to trace the pattern. You can trace the patterns using any washable markers or colored pencil. I'm going to use a black colored pencil. Then cut out each piece. Make sure you mark where the top is, since the top and the bottom look really similar. Now to start sewing. During this project, I'm going to be saying the right and wrong side of fabric a lot. And what I mean by that is, the right side of fabric is the side that would be facing out, that you want people to see. And the wrong side of the fabric is the inside, or the back, the part of the fabric that people wouldn't see. So, with right sides facing each other, sew a stitch down the rounded edge of the fabric. This next step is the trickiest. You have to sew a thin stitch next to the center stitch that holds the folded fabric down. It's tricky because it's rounded and you could easily start to stitch sideways, so go slowly. Repeat that with the white gauze fabric. Now layer the white gauze on top of your cotton, right sides facing each other. Make sure the top edge and bottom edge are lined up and not flip-flopped. Take your time to make sure they're lined up right. The easiest way to do this is to pin at the center marks and then pin on the outer edges. Now stitch along the top and bottom edges. Then flip it right side out and we're almost done. These edges need to be folded in twice to make space for the elastic straps. The pattern shows how far the edges should be folded over. This is optional, but I prefer to press the seam first to make it easier on myself. Otherwise, you're fighting with the fabric to stay down. Fold the fabric over and glue it down lightly with your fabric glue of choice. I prefer Fabri-Tac because it dries clear, it's super strong, and it dries fast. Once that's dry, fold the edges over one more time and sew a stitch down the side, leaving room for the elastic. Last but not least, cut elastic to about 25 centimeters. To make sure it doesn't fray, you can burn the ends lightly, but this isn't necessary. Feed it through the ends of the mask. I use tweezers to help pull it through, or you can use a safety pin to push it through like this. Tie both ends together tightly, then turn the elastic until the knot is hidden in the fold. Ta-da! All done! Now to make another one for my husband. We're both huge Harry Potter fans and die-hard Hufflepuffs, so he'll love this fabric.
Make sure you make a few for the week and don't reuse one without washing it first. You could even apply a little bit of essential oil to the inside if you're prone to panic attacks. If you have asthma or sensitive skin like me, then make sure you use unscented laundry detergent. The United States Center for Disease Control has supplied some guidelines for cloth mask use, so I'll make sure to include that link below too. For example, you shouldn't grab your mask by the mouth, but by the elastic, so you don't get germs on your fingers. So there's some other tidbits like that to check out. You don't need a sewing machine to make this mask either. You can use a needle and thread by hand, or even use fabric glue. What's nice about these masks is they don't necessarily need to be structurally sound. They're just covering your face, not holding anything up. As long as you use something that's waterproof, since washing these is very important. If you make these masks or have any other projects that are keeping you safe and busy during COVID-19, I'd love to see them. Tag me on Instagram at bunnydiy, and I'll give you a shout out in my next video. We have a lot of shout outs today. Thank you to Kat A-List, Libby Ann Best, Vivalaine Rusin, Resin Bell, Jess Genocide, Megs Crafts, Nezreen A, and Jan Adler. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I post every Monday morning. Thanks for watching everyone! Please stay home and stay safe! Love you a latte!